Uh, what's happening folks, coronavirus update. I wanted to talk about preparation, panic. I wanted to give just a little bit of an update and I wanted to read a quote that really inspired this impromptu video without all the gadgetry and lighting and sound and cool guy cameras. This is Mrs. Poet holding my phone because I really wanted to get this out to you. This, there's a quote that I came across today that's just so fitting for the coronavirus type stuff and all the panic going around and all you guys are gonna immediately benefit from it. It's one of those sober uh, sober doses of reality and perspective shifts that you're gonna really benefit from. Before I jump into kind of the panic stuff, the preparation stuff, and the quote that I just was talking about, I wanna give kind of just a little bit of an overview and some of my general thoughts on coronavirus as people are just freaking out right now. Uh, some of the death tolls, uh, 4,700 worldwide out of 127,000 cases. You guys have probably seen this, so I'll rattle through this pretty darn quick. That's about 4% of the people infected with coronavirus are dying from it. Uh, relatively low, but every single death is way too many deaths, in my opinion. Uh, 1,325 cases in the U.S. at the time of making this video with a total of 40 fatalities, and that gives us about a 3% death rate. Anyway, people are freaking out. In the U.S., over 40 deaths, which again, that's 40 too many, but in Italy, it's 1,000 deaths. And closing our airports really, really early, we're kind of ahead of this and isolated, but people are still freaking out. And I've got two different sides of a narrative. One side is saying, hey, this is mass extinction. It's like the second black death is creeping up on us and everyone's going to die. And then the other side is being like, are you kidding me? The, the flu kills way more people than this. And I don't know whether it's going to be something that all of the sudden it just booms and we didn't take it seriously enough. Or the other side is saying, hey, you guys are getting way too crazy about this. And so it's hard to realize you know what's going on. People are citing the death cases of the flu or any number of things. More people are dying of bee stings or something. So anyway, th there's all these death statistics and it's like, is this media hype or is it something real? You guys are gonna have to decide. Weigh in in the comments below. That is not my role. I don't work for the CDC. I don't know any of this stuff, but I do know something about preparation and panic in the midst of fear and that kind of stuff. I wanted to be able to stay on point, do that, and be a little bit of a sobering voice as I read from a dude named C.S. Lewis. Now, C.S. Lewis, this is a, a, a little bit of a lengthy quote, but you're gonna dig it, so hang in there, stay with me. Really cool, I wouldn't be making a video on the spot if I didn't have kind of that heart burden built up for you. Uh, there's a website called The Gospel Coalition, and I'll provide links down below if you guys wanna check them out, but they they brought this article to my attention. The article is, uh, it's an excerpt from an article in, from written in 1948 called On Living in an Atomic Age. And so C.S. Lewis was worried about the atomic bombs and everyone's going kind of mass hysteria and panic there. All you have to do for the purposes of this reading is whenever you hear the word atomic anything, just replace it with coronavirus. Got it? And so flu, pandemic, epidemic, whatever you want to say, uh, there you go. So let me dive in and then we'll talk a little bit more. Uh, in one way, we think a great deal too much of the atomic bomb, or in this case, coronavirus. How are we to live in an atomic age? I'm tempted to reply, why, as you would live in the 16th century, when the plague visited London almost every year, or as you would have lived in the Viking Age, when raiders from Scandinavia might land and cut your throat in any night, or indeed, as you are already living in an age of cancer, an age of syphilis, an age of paralysis, an age of air raids, an age of railway accidents, an age of motor accidents. In other words, do not let us begin by exaggerating the novelty of our situation. Believe me, dear sir or madam, you and all whom you love are already sentenced to death before the atomic bomb was invented. And quite a high percentage of us were going to die in unpleasant ways. I know this is thrillingly fun for you, but hang in there. We had indeed one very great advantage over our ancestors, anesthetics, but we have that still. It is perfectly ridiculous to go about whimpering and drawing long faces because the scientists have added one more chance of painful and premature death to a world which already bristled with such chances and in which death itself uh, was not a chance at all, but a certainty you're going to die. This is the first point to be made, and hang on, I'm, I'm closing up here. And the first action to be taken is to pull ourselves together. If we are all going to be destroyed by an atomic bomb, let that bomb 
when it comes find us, doing sensible human things, praying, working, teaching, reading, listening to music, bathing the children, playing tennis, chatting to our friends uh, over a pint and a game of darts, not huddled together like frightened sheep and thinking about bombs. They may break our bodies, a microbe can do that, but they uh, need not dominate our minds. And people are panicking, I'm seeing all of this stuff on Instagram where like two old ladies are fighting, you know, in a battle royale over some toilet paper and how toilet paper is going to save you from the coronavirus, I don't know. But panic is setting in, people are closing everything and whether that's the right call or the wrong call, I don't know, I just noticed all the stores that we're going to, restaurants, they're just ghost towns. I go to the gym and it's just me competing with a guy in the mirror. Uh, our airports are closing. Boston Marathon was canceled. March Madness canceled. Disneyland, Disney World canceled. Uh, in the gun world, USCCA show and NRA show canceled. The stock market has plummeted 20%. Uh, I just checked the Dow. I don't know what S&P and other things are doing. 20%. And opportunistically, I immediately bought more money. Thanks, Interior Investors. Blah, blah. This wasn't meant to be anything like that. But opportunistically, I can't not see it. I'm like, Life will return to normal somewhere at the end of this. And in the middle, I see this huge dive. I'm like, holy smokes. Anyway, people are just going nuts. And I noticed the people that are really panicking are the people who haven't been preparing for anything. You know, if you have no savings and all of a sudden your car breaks, yeah, it's panic because you haven't planned ahead in those ways. You know, we're, we're not panicking and that if all of a sudden worse came to worse, we could just close our doors and we can live a very long time in this house with a lot of extra food, a lot of water, uh, some alternate energy. We've got toilet paper. We've got more guns and ammo than I'll admit, and we'd be just fine. Why? And we don't need to panic because we've prepared in advance, right? And so I don't think that this is something that all, all of a sudden is gonna come down to how much toilet paper you have. We'll see how all this shakes out. I think that it's been overblown some. However, I'm still a big fan of taking precautions, washing your hands, go in Purell and don't go uh, to into big crowds you don't need to. Be careful of daycares and all that stuff. It's all good, good precautions. But to lose your cool and to lose your mind and to lose your joy and peace and allow life to just shut down all of the sudden over, you know, like 40 deaths nationwide, that, that's not a lot. Now, if it jumps to numbers, we'll know that, hey, we should have reacted even more. But anyway, keep your cool, guys. Prepare. Think it through. If all of a sudden, you know, like I know on a battlefield, as soon as you start panicking, all things are going to go sideways. Nothing is gained through your panic. It's more just calm, cool, collected, thinking it through, right? So anyway, that, that's my encouragement for you guys uh, tonight as the whole world goes hysterical. Let's make sure our society, warrior poets, that we're being smart, we're not opening ourselves up to unnecessary risk despite all the hysteria, and that we use this as a learning point going forward so that if all of a sudden you're tempted to rush out and get a bunch of stuff, let's make a note and start gathering preparatory supplies right now over the next few whatever months and years so that when things happen, disaster strikes, you're not caught with your pants down proverbially. We will uh, pray for the victims infected and for all of, uh, and for the um, stop of the spread of this. Obviously, our uh, thoughts will go out, our prayers will go out uh, to all those people. But uh, anyway, wanted to give you kind of a little bit of a public service announcement and say, you know, you got this, we're gonna be okay. Anyway, guys, train hard, train smart. And uh, we'll see you next time.